Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and in today's tutorial we are going to have a look at the taxi procedures in the Airbus A320 and how to taxi the airplane properly. So, we have already completed our after-start procedures and we have indeed already gotten the cabin ready signal over here so we can go right for the taxi. Note that the cabin ready is not a requirement for this. I just mentioned it because it so happened that they have been pretty fast. So before we start taxi, obviously the uh, table should be stowed by now and in some airlines you would conduct the flight control track while you're still standing here on the ground before you start moving the airplane. That obviously comes in rather handy in flight simulation as well because we can focus on conducting the control track rather than having to taxi the airplane and conduct the control track at the same time. For that reason I would suggest everyone to do the control track before you start moving, but many airlines also do it while the airplane is moving since it reduces the time standing on the ground without the engine running. So let's go for the flight control track now. Okay, so we start by going full up and you don't only pull the side stick full up, you also verify that the control movement is actually to the complete extremity. And then you go full down and back to neutral. Now the aileron full left, full right, neutral. Now a small point over here in terms of the aileron, and I think I have to go really up close so that you can actually see it. You will notice that on the ailerons there are two indications over here. Now you've got that, let's call it equal sign here, the two lines, and then you've got that lower one over here. And now the flight control page already disappears, let's just get it back. So make sure that the aileron is actually in the correct position for your configuration. Finally, you are going to check the rudder, and before you do that, be sure to press the pedal disconnect push button. Now what this does is it disconnects the nose wheel steering from the brake paddles. By default, you have 7 degrees of nose wheel steering available on the brake paddles, and um, since you don't want to steer the plane, or even worse, skid the uh, wheel over the ground with a stationary airplane, that's why you press the um, paddle disconnect push button. Right, so then we do the rudder input, full left, full right, neutral. And then be sure to release that paddle disconnect button again, otherwise you are going to have steering problems during a taxi. Okay then, when that is done, get your taxi clearance. Check that the left side is clear and the right side is clear and then we turn the nose light to taxi and the runway turn off lights to on. The nose light is really only very very narrow beam of light immediately in front of you that doesn't illuminate a lot. So also use the runway turn off lights over here. Release the parking brake and if your airplane is rather empty it will actually start to roll on its own. Like we can see it over here the plane actually starts taxiing on its own already. Immediately when the plane gets moving, we want to check that the brakes are operative. So we are going to go for the brake check and what you will notice is when I press the pedals, we do not want to see any movement on the indicator over there. So brake check, pressure zero. My pedals are now pressed as you can see. So why do we want to see zero pressure on the brake pressure indicator then? That's quite simple, because the brake pressure you see on the triple indicator is the alternate brake system. And we want to be sure that the primary, the normal brake system, is now operating. So we verify that the plane is slowing down when we press the pedals, and we verify that we do not see any brake pressure on here, because that would indicate that the alternate system has taken over. Therefore, by getting zero pressure on here, we make sure that the primary system is operative. Okay then, taxi technique. So, the brakes on Airbus aircraft heat up rather quickly. Therefore, we want to minimize the amount of brake applications needed. In order to do that, in order to minimize that, we need to minimize the time spent breaking the airplane down. Now, and the amount of brake applications overall. So as we're approaching the turn here, I'm going to take the blue line. We do slow it down with a light brake pressure application, but then I'm going to go below 
the speed limit here, so I'm going to go somewhere down to 7 knots or something, so that I can be sure that even though the plane still accelerates on idle, we don't have to use the brakes again as we go through and complete the turn. Like that, if you only slowed it to 10 knots, you can see we've already had another 2 knot speed increase here. We might have had to use a second brake application. We don't want that, so do slow it down a little bit below the 10 knot speed limit in turn. Talking about speed limits, our speed limits are 10 knots in tight turns maximum. You can always go much slower than that. 15 knots maximum on aprons. 30 knots when going straight ahead on long straight taxiways and 50 knots when backtracking a runway. So we're approaching the next turn to the right there. You can see our speed is 70 knots again by now. So once again I start to slow the plane down nicely and gently to reach approximately 7 knots when entering the turn. Like this. Okay, the left side is clear, the right side is clear. Now we can enter the turn and even though our speed is going to increase again we can avoid another brake application. So like that you really aim to control how many brake applications you need because in my airline on the A330 we do say that every brake application costs $40. Now obviously that is a little bit exaggerated but you get the general idea here. All right then, so we are about clearing the apron and we are about to enter a long straight taxiway. So as I told you, the maximum speed is 30 knots on a long straight taxiway. In order to avoid constant wear and tear of the brakes, what we are going to do is we will let the airplane accelerate to 30 knots and only then we are going to break it back down towards 10 and then repeat. So. In case you have sufficient engine thrust that you do not need to add power, which is normally the case at most weights that flight must typically fly, we can just let the plane accelerate now, without the need to add any thrust. It will accelerate on its own, and that is literally all we can ask for. So, if you do have a little bit of time there, there is the pilot monitoring task that you need to carry out during the taxi. And the pilot monitoring is going to co basically confirm the ATC clearance as we taxi out. So he's going to go over the flight plan page again, verify that the runway is correct, in this case 26 right, the sit is correct, give me 1 November, the initial climb altitude is set on the FCU, 7000 feet in our case, and verify that both flight directors are on on the um, EFIS control panels. Only then, when the pilot monitoring has done this, and this is basically done silently, but it is an important check to make sure that really the last clearance you have obtained is what you also have in your FMS. When that is done, then the pilot flying is going to confirm the departure briefing. And when there is no change, all you need to say is, no changes to the takeoff briefing and that's it if there are changes let's say for example because our performance has changed maybe it started raining in the meantime anything that differs from the previous briefing you have done then you need to update it at this point all right reaching 30 knots as you can see down here all the way in idle still so now i'm going to break the airplane down again slowly and gently there is no need to rush this but make sure that you do not ride the brakes for too long. Like this, you can see the plane easily slows down. We go back down towards 10 knots and that's it. Now over here is Alpha 12, the intersection that we calculated for our takeoff. Let's say that ATC has not given us that clearance, but we actually have to taxi all the way to the full line. So, speed is coming down. Here we go, back down to 10 knots, releasing the brakes, and now we let the airplane accelerate again. And that is how you control the airplane during taxi. Now, when the pilot flying has talked about the departure briefing, so either no change or amended whatever was necessary, that is the trigger for the pilot monitoring to start the taxi flow pattern. And the taxi flow pattern is the following. Auto brake comes on, terrain on ND is necessary, so let's say that we want to turn it on today, so we are going to switch it on on the uh, PM side over here. 
Then you move down to the transponder, you just check the squawk is in, the buff is selected, auto selected, on. Then you move over to the weather radar, turn it on. So system number one, if the captain's pilot flying, system number two, if the first officer is pilot flying, and predictive wind shear goes to auto. And then you are going to press the take of config push button up here, which runs the take of config test. And when all of that is done, then the pilot flying is going to call for the taxi checklist. So, taxi checklist. Let me drive, drive through this turn over here before we actually do the list. So, again, this turn is not that tight, so speed slightly higher than 10 knots is acceptable over here as we definitely will not need a full tiller input on this one. All right, here we go. So, taxi checklist. Flight controls, checked. Flap setting, and you look over here, verify that you've got the config that you're looking for, and then you just verify on the FMS that you have the same setting. But when you press the takeoff config push button and you have selected a different config in your um, FMS than you have actually set, you would be alerted to that by the automatics anyway. So, flap setting, config 1 plus F, radar and predictive wind shear, and that one you just cross check on the panel. Many people still look down here to cross check the status of the um, weather radar and predictive wind shear. Don't do that. Look up here. You got the weather radar indication up here, and if the predictive wind shear was not on, you would have an amber indication up here as soon as the um, takeoff config test has been done. So this is what it looks like. If I didn't turn the predictive wind shear on, you would get that over here. And when the takeoff config test is pressed, that would actually turn amber. So for the challenge radar and predictive wind shear, all you do is you check you got the weather indication over here and you don't have the predictive wind shear indication over here. Engine start selector, again, you cross check that over here. So make sure that there is an appropriate indication here that may either be nothing in case you got good weather or if you really had um, strong turbulence suspected or the like then you would have it in the ignition start position and you would see that over here as you can see so when the challenge engine start selector comes look up here nothing okay norm ecom memo take off no blue self-explanatory and that is the taxi checklist complete all right then to finish up this tutorial, we are going to do the lineup items next, and those are rather easy. So, lineup items, brake fan is off, lineup clearance is received, TCAS, TARA, advise the cabin to prepare for departure, cabin crew, prepare for departure. Verify and confirm the runway that you're about to enter, so we can see over here, we've got 26 right, alpha 15. And when you do that and have a different intersection than planned, just be sure to adjust the takeoff shift. In our case, we went for the full runway so we can take the entire takeoff shift out. Then we're going to check the approach path, making sure that there is nothing visible. Obviously, in this case, the uh, first officer would have to do it, but for flight timing purposes, usually the TCAS is fine as well. And finally, we're going to switch the packs as required. We're going to conduct a packs off takeoff today, so we switch both packs off. Finally, make sure that the sliding tables are stowed on both sides and do the lineup checklist next. So let's go ahead and start our lineup and we are going to conduct the lineup checklist now. So takeoff runway, 26 right for length, TCAS. Now here's a little trick. Again, we don't look down here, but for the TCAS challenge, we just look up here. And if you see these two and a half mile rings, that indicates to you that the TCAS is actually in the Tara position. A little Airbus trick there. If you see those rings, the TCAS is in Tara. Just to show you, if I turn it back off, you got a complete ring. If I turn it back on, let me show it like this. You can now see that, you, that the inner ring has changed. And this works on both the 10 and the 20 nautical mile ranges. From the 40, 40 nautical mile range on, it doesn't work anymore. So, TCAS, TARA, and packs 1 and 2, off. Lineup checklist complete. 
All right, so let's go ahead and conduct our lineup. And from there onwards, we're going to go into the takeoff tutorial, which is going to be a separate video. So with that, I would like to thank you very much for watching this one. Hope that you learned something. Be sure to leave your comments below the video. And with that, I would like to say thank you for watching. See you all again on the next one. Two, and six, if you're up for more, right. don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Finally, if you really love what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching and see you all again on the next one.